Uh, I want to see what I'm filming. Can you still see me okay? Okay. What's going on everybody? Uh, we are in Big Bend National Park and the only way you can see me is because my dad's holding two daylight spotlights on me what we're gonna do is we're gonna do just a quick brief basic milky way tutorial specifically in zero light pollution skies if you're in like a bordel four to five ish whatever you could do a single shot get the foreground sky all that crap you can't do that out here because there's no light pollution so what we'll do is is we'll go over getting a composition settings and then the most important thing of all is reading the histogram so let's get to it. So right now I just got the camera set up, pointing at a cactus because there's 8 million cactuses out here, cacti, there's 8 million cacti out here, and the Milky Way's right over there. So what we're gonna do is we'll take a picture and we'll see how it turns out. So what we can do is we can use live view, scoot the cactus over to the other side of the frame and take another test shot. So we got our single, we got our single exposure, which is fine. If you're happy with that, if you like that, that kind of look or whatever, then you're done. Uh, Pick up a camera, going about your rat killing. But if you have any intention on printing these things, the issue arises of noise. So step number one in your camera settings will be to go to your menu and you'll turn on long exposure noise reduction. What that'll do, it'll take a dark frame of equal exposure time and uh, stack it to reduce noise in camera. Another trick you can do is just stack several foreground exposures. If nothing moves and everything is static, then the noise will cancel out by using a medium blur. But we're not gonna go over any of that. This is just basic, set up the camera, take a picture of the Milky Way. If you're in a really dark sky, what I would suggest you do is take two separate exposures, one for the sky, one for the foreground. This will give you a better overall final result. And if you just so happen to decide to print it, then you won't have all that noise in the foreground. We'll go ahead and get that set up. But how do you get that set up? Well, you take your basic exposure and you can use an app like Photo Pills and it'll give you an exposure equivalent. So right now we're at F2.8 ISO 6425 seconds. To get a much cleaner foreground, Photo Pills has an equivalent of F4 at ISO 1600 for three minutes. So what we'll do is, is we'll focus on the foreground set the camera to three minutes with long exposure noise reduction on and so that'll give you a total of a six minute exposure for the foreground three minutes light frame three minutes dark frame and your foreground will be much sharper and much crisper with less noise so we'll do that now it is important to note that if you would like to go over 30 seconds uh, to go into bulb mode you will need an intervalometer which these are like on amazon like 20 bucks it ain't that big of a deal you can get them cabled you can get them bluetooth or wireless or whatever so we'll go ahead and set this for three minutes turn long exposure noise reduction on in camera focus on the foreground and then just kind of sit back and chill for six minutes So we're done with the three minute exposure. Let's see what we got. We have a problem. On the back of the LCD screen, you can see it looks pretty good. However, if you look at the histogram, you'll notice that it is most definitely clipping the blacks. So what'll end up happening is, is whenever you go into post-processing and go to boost that exposure, whatever's clipped black is gonna be noise, all of it. So what that means is you have to tweak your settings a little bit you can either open up the F ratio a little bit, maybe F3.5 or F3.2, or you can go a longer exposure, say three and a half minutes, or you can boost your ISO. You can do one of those. 
just to get that black away from the side of the histogram. So let's just say for the sake of the argument that we did that. So you have your foreground shot done. Now you wanna do your sky. Chances are, if you do your foreground shot first, your Milky Way will be no longer be in the position you need it to. So you might have to move it a little bit, move the camera a little bit, and then you can always move the Milky Way back to where it was in the first place. So we'll go ahead and reset the camera using the live view to the Milky Way. And we'll go ahead and take our base picture to get our Milky Way shot. So I raised the camera up a little bit so it's still facing the cactus, but it'll get more of the sky. So whenever we get this picture and we align them in post-processing, we'll just crop out the excess. So now you can see the picture we got of just the sky. It looks great. We'll go into Photoshop, bring those two together and come up with this final picture. I need a haircut. Look at that crap. So if anybody's been following along on the on the Instagram, then you'll know that this data was compromised. I got back home and started doing all the time lapses and I was super excited for everything. And then the hard drive got corrupted. Whenever I went to plug it into the computer, it wouldn't recognize it. So luckily I got all the data back. We're ready to rock and roll. I got four images pulled up from the Milky Way shoot out at Big Bend. Two of them are an example and two of them are the working files. So if you look here, you'll see that the foregrounds lit up when dad was holding the light against him, even though it was super dim and super against him, the long exposure picked up all the light in the foreground. And this is actually technically one technique of shooting Milky Way or any kind of nightscape, night landscape, which is called low level lighting or even light painting and you can see the, you know, the, the cactus is real lit up and all that. But the problem is, is that we weren't focused on the cactus. So it's out of focus. But that's one technique. This was the shot to get the composition, the foreground composition, how I wanted it. So now that we have it how we wanted it at f2.8 and 25 seconds, you can see how absolutely horrendous that is. And even if we were to crank up noise reduction, I mean, you still got all the hot pixels and all, because I mean, hell, it was whatever it was, 90 degrees or whatever it was that night. It was hot. So we're not going to use those two pictures. So here is the foreground we're going to use. And if you look, we're at F4 and 180 seconds. And that's with long exposure noise reduction. So it was actually a six minute picture, three minute light, three minute dark merged into one picture. So if you look now, now you can see just how sharp that cactus is. And we, I mean, we still have noise because like I said, it was hot. We're not shooting a cooled DSLR, but it'll be a whole lot easier to take off some of that extra noise and keep a whole lot of that detail. And then after the foreground, we realign and we have our Milky Way shot. So we have these files opened up in Camera Raw. You can use Lightroom, Camera Raw. If you open them both up in Photoshop, it should default to Camera Raw, which is basically the same as Lightroom. So you want to do as many basic adjustments as possible and then export them both into Photoshop, open them both in Photoshop and then you can either work on them separately and then merge them or merge them first and then work on it as a whole. I have not touched any of this data yet. So this is my first time doing it. I'm doing it right along with y'all. So let's get started. So what I'm looking at, it, when, I, when, I, when you crank up the vibrance and the saturation, there's two ways you can do it. You can look at the sky to get a good mix of your blue, yellow, green and magenta or you can look at your histogram and just try to match the peaks and valleys of each color so if you take off vibrance and saturation red green and blue peaks and valleys line up fairly well and we have a pretty good looking image and remember this is our foreground picture so we're not too terribly concerned with the sky we're focused on the foreground for the rest of the edits we just we just want to use the sky to get the right color balance Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. The basic adjustments for the foreground are done. So we can copy those, paste them onto the sky. Now we'll look at our sky one, and that's obviously too bright. So we'll go ahead and lower those settings. So we'll go ahead and open both of those up. So we have our sky and we have our foreground. What we're gonna do is we're gonna line up the mountains here. So we'll control A, control C, 
and we'll copy that. We'll go to our foreground and we'll control V, paste it. So now we have both images on top of each other. We'll go to the first layer and go to difference. So now you can see both mountain ranges, one's in black and one's in white. Difference shows you the difference of the pixels of each layer. So why that's handy is because if you move this up and you see how the mountains begin to align, the picture turns more black. And it's not gonna be a perfect alignment because we use the wide angle lens. So what we'll probably have to do is control T and then right click and hit warp. And we'll be able to kind of play and it doesn't have to be 100% perfect because we can always kind of blend in that the difference between the two pictures. That's pretty close. So we'll go ahead and hit enter and we'll change it back to normal. So now if we click this layer on and off, the horizon should be pretty well stacked. And it's funny, you can actually see warping of the wide angle lens where it's looking at the ground long ways and it looks up to the sky, how it shrinks and flips. So now all we'll do is we'll kind of blend in where we want that, that horizon break and we can just black out the, or mask out the uh, foreground of this one. There's like 25 different ways to do this. You can do a layer mask with a black brush and just paint, or you can actually select there. You can do a mask and then just control I, invert the mask, boom, there you go. Okay, so now you wanna crop the image. <clears throat> and this, this is depending on what you wanna do with it. Do you wanna print it? Is it going on Instagram? Is it going on Facebook? Uh, if it's going on Instagram, I suggest doing a four by five crop because you know that's all their age these days for some reason. Obviously we have some cropping or some stacking artifacts over here in this corner. So we're not gonna be able to keep that. And we have some lineup issues over here. But again, I got a solution for that. So before we do anything else, we'll go ahead and solve that issue. Since this is our problem area, we'll just have to focus it here. Now we'll go ahead and crop. We'll go ahead and do a four by five since that's all the rage. So now the problem you run into is if you do do a four by five is you have to decide what to crop out. So now we have one single image and that is what we'll work on. We have a foreground, we have a sky, and now you can just do whatever you want to to your heart's content. So what we'll do is we'll make another layer. We'll go back to camera raw now that we have the entire canvas. By using two separate images, you have to work on this as two separate images sometimes, uh, especially because one was at 25 seconds and one was at 180 seconds. You're not going to have the same noise pattern. You're not going to have the same clarity. It just takes a little bit. So luckily with that, see, I don't, I don't ever like to flatten anything. So with this layer mask still here, I was able just to pull it up and drag it. And so now I got my color for the sky, make another layer. And to make another layer, it's control alt shift E. So I'll go back to the camera I'll filter again and we'll do the foreground. With your foreground layer active, you can go to filter, noise, dust and scratches. One usually takes care of it. All right, so now you can take that same layer mask, apply it, and then just flip it, control I. That's pretty much it. You got your cactus, you got your Milky Way. I mean, there's literally limitless things you can do to this picture. Make it black and white. You can dodge and burn the foreground to make the cactus pop a little bit or make this part of the cactus pop and this part darker and same with the ground and I don't like this color cast though so I have to figure that out
I made it all the way to the end of this video and I realized that I didn't have the secondary light on. Uh, anyway, like I said, there is l almost literally unlimited ways you could do this light painting, long exposure, stacked long exposure, which would really take care of all the noise in the foreground. Tracking your Milky Way and doing a stacked long exposure, blue hour blends, all kind of stuff. Or you can go out there, take you a 20 second picture with the silhouetted mountains and there you go. I mean, the only thing that matters is getting out. That's all that matters. Go outside, look up, turn the phone off. We can finish this out in Big Bend, so. <laughs> oh, hell. Well, I hope you all have enjoyed that simple tutorial. Look, there's like a hundred different ways you can do this. This is just the basic way to do it with no lights, nothing extra. It's a camera, a tripod, and a remote. And that's it. That's all you really need. You know, there's people who do the low level lighting stuff. There's people who do time blends. Really, you can do pretty much anything. The one thing you do need to remember is, is that if you do come to a place like this, you are in a national park, be courteous of others at all times. You know, always follow the leave no trace principles and just have fun. It's not a competition, you know. I don't come out here to try to be the best. I come out here to get away from life and escape all that crap. Everybody has their own reasons. But at the end of the day, if you would like to start doing this, follow some of these tips and just have fun. And until next time, I'll see y'all later.